Game of Thrones episode 3, promptly titled Lord, Lord Snow, is the episode where everybody that disbanded since Winterfell finally makes it to everywhere that they were journeying to. Jon Snow finally makes it to the Wall alongside Tyrion. Ned Stark and co. finally make it to King's Landing. Uh, Bran woke up and he's still just laying in his bed at Winterfell, basically getting harassed by Old Nan and her weird-ass stories. Now, the one thing I do have to say about this plotting of Bran being harassed by all of the weird-ass horror stories from Old Nan, she actually makes a reference to Sir Duncan the Tall, which is Duncan the Knight from A Knight from the Seven Kingdoms featuring Duncan Egg storylines. That would, have, that would be a, a great story to hear like at night, right before you go to sleep, because those are, those are fun adventures. Now, as I said, Jon Snow and Tyrion finally make it to the wall, and basically it's Jon Snow trying to fit in with everybody else, he, and the problem is that he's so accustomed to living with people that are either fe feeling and thinking that they're on equal terms with him or above him. And in which case, he unintentionally makes everybody at the wall feel like pieces of garbage. And by that, I mean he'll get into a sparring sword fight with somebody, beat their ass, and just whatever the whole thing. Meanwhile, the other guy gets all pissy and bent out of shape. Now, I don't... I don't blame or fault John for acting this way because honestly, he, he's completely ignorant. He doesn't understand that these guys are jealous and envious of who he is. The, the reason is he's just so ignorant because he grew up being around kingly or families and shit. So he, he doesn't really understand that thieves and rapists look over him because he's Lord Snow to them. He's, he's kingly himself. So at the end of John's storyline, he goes through a whole thing, learning throughout all of these assaults and attacks made on him, and then finding out through Tyrion that all of this came from his attitude towards them, which again, I don't fault him. I completely understand when you're ignorant to the fact of how you present yourself to people when you don't recognize how somebody else lives, but he finally acknowledges that he was kind of the bad guy, he was kind of being a dickhead to everybody. So at the end of the day, he started ch teaching everybody around him how to sword fight and, and shit. And then he also found out from a raven's message that Bran has wakened. And then there's Tyr Tyrion's storyline, which was helping Jon Snow fit in, and then also basically counseling with uh, Mormont and the Targaryen, who's the maester there, and basically they're ranting about how King's Landing is always fit with people, and they're always in, in good health because the wall has men that, that protects them from the darkness and everything, but then they also say that they need more men, and he needs to go back and prompt to bring more thieves and rapists to the wall, so that they have more men at arms to protect them from the darkness. And then they also explain the dark times of winter is coming and the Song of Ice and Fire to, to an extent. Uh, and the whole Song of Ice and Fire, if you're not keen to this whole thing yet, it's the White Walkers. They've they trampled through Westeros before and everybody's terrified they're about to do it again because I guess it just feels colder. Uh, as cold, I guess, as... It did way back when, when their ancestors were born. And so, yeah, that's John and Tyrion's storyline. Then we get Arya, Sansa, and Ned's storylines, which the, the bulk of this episode's book story is still approximately 40 to 50 pages. And that's because Ned and Arya and Sansa's storylines are basically meshed together because they're all in King's Landing and they kind of all share the same storyline. Same with Catelyn as well. After episode two, she made her travels into episode three. She made her travels to King's Landing, which this episode 
honestly did a huge disservice to the book story for Catelyn because the book story actually takes you after the events of episode two for Catelyn's POV, it takes you actually not even on the King's Road. You, you just assume she took the King's Road route, but she didn't. Uh, the book story explains that the King's Road route would be way too dangerous for her to travel with companions because people are just in an uprage right now and everybody's going psycho. So they actually take by sea and they get on ships and shit. They think that they deem that safer. And Catelyn's POV before episode three is traveling on by ship through sea and everything. She meets quirky characters. None that are present in Game of Thrones episode three. So episode three starts with Catelyn's story. She makes it to King's Landing. Just so basically from episode two to three, she just goes from Winterfell to King's Landing, just like that. And then she is found out immediately by Littlefinger's whispers. And she goes to one of his brothels and she makes a complaint to him that he did a huge disservice to her carrying her to a, a brothel, but he explains that this is one of his many homesteads that he has bought and he didn't mean any offense. That's just where he was at the time. Honestly, when you, when you come to learn more about Littlefinger, you come to realize it, that was probably his intent. He was probably trying somehow to make her jealous to try and fuck him like he's always wanted to have happen. But right now, his intentions are meant to be like okay and true. He he bought this establishment. He was residing there for the time. So he invited her to go there. He didn't think anything of it. That's his intention right now. So they talk and everything. And then there's Ned's storyline where he makes it to King's Landing and immediately Squires force him to go to, to the King's Council for meetings. And he even explains, this is some bullshit, man. I just got done traveling. Can I not sleep or some shit? And in which case, Renly and all of them, Renly, Varys, they all explain how the king wants a tournament in the, in the new hand's name. And they go through the expenses. And Ned's the only one in uproar about how, my God, the king is spending this much? I, I refuse to believe that John Aaron would allow him to do this when he was alive. And they all just explain that the, the king always just does whatever he wants. And at the end of the day, John Aaron tried, but he was just, eh. So Ned's the only one that uh, being the morally good person is just like, oh my God, the king owes millions to the Lannisters. Obviously, that's not going to be good for the storyline for, for Robert, so... I'm going to talk to him. So before he talks to him, he finds out that Catelyn is also there. And that's a jest with Littlefinger, which, again, Littlefinger brought her to a brothel. And then he brought Ned to said brothel. And he made it sound like a joke that Catelyn was there. I guess forcing Ned's hand to literally be around his throat. Until Catelyn stops him and says, yo, I am here. So he goes in there, Catelyn is there to explain about what happened to Bran, what happened with the cat spawn, the Valyrian steel blade, and they come to find out that the blade actually is owned by Littlefinger. Oh, but it's not though, because conveniently he lost it in the last tourney when Tyrion made a bet against his brother Jaime. He, he, I guess Tyrion was, was set to wager on the other guy to win, which is very not Tyrion-y of him. But anyway, we'll, we'll get to that eventually in epi other episodes. So now they're under the intention of and the assumption that Tyrion is the one that sent the cat spawn to kill Bran. So I wonder what's going to go on from here. Anybody that's read the books or watched the show already, we already know. But yeah, so after that, after that, then we get Arya and Sansa's scenes with Ned where Arya is just straight up acting like a fucking bitch, not going to lie. Just acting like a stone cold bitch to everybody, including Ned, all because the Hound was tasked to ride down Mikan, the butcher's boy. And she's also really mad about the whole lady thing and having to 
banish away Nymeria and Joffrey being a douchebag and that all of it's understandable. She's a little girl and all of this death is just happening around her just immediately. And she's getting under Sansa's skin and Sansa just wants nothing more for, to do with her. So they all banish Arya to a room in which Ned actually has a very pleasant conversation with Arya. It's, it's a really wholesome father-daughter conversation in featuring her sword Needle. He discovers that she gave, she has a sword named Needle and he asked where she got it from because he, he knows that it's made from Winterfell's armor. She refuses to rat out Jon Good on her being a great sister, especially to the bastard of the family, because they love each other. John and Arya never had quarrels with each other. They actually loved each other the most out of the siblings. But uh, the wholesome part comes from Ned explaining to Arya about Sansa's duties to Joffrey and how she had to, she had to say she didn't remember whatever happened and blah, blah, blah. And that is why... The lady had to die even though they didn't want Lena to die, but that's why Sansa had to do it. So Arya understands it eventually, and then Ned also talks more about the sword in which he finally realizes, he's starting to finally realize that Arya's not really meant to be a lady. So by the end of the episode, he hires a bravosi, Sirio Farrell, which is an amazing character. I, I love Sirio. He is such a phenomenal character, especially when he quarrels with Arya and, and shit. And so the end of this episode is Sirio teaching, starting to teach Arya how to actually sword dance. And it's really cool because it's not, a, it's not the normalized sword fighting, it's literal sword dancing. And it's, it's just phenomenal. I, that's why I love the, this series and that's why I love Game of Thrones in general. Everything is medieval. But it's, there's always some quirkiness to the medieval aspect. Now, the biggest thing that I do love about this episode, Lord Snow, episode 3, is the amount of fucking filler scenes featuring all the secondary characters that are not present in the book. Like, for example, Cersei having a, a mother-son conversation with Joffrey where it starts wholesome where she's actually tending to his wounds like a mother and she's even talking to him about the incident and shit like a mother would but then it steers into evil conversations about evil shit and she's basically hyping up Joffrey to be the next king and she's trying to get his input on what he would do when he's a king and and he goes on this tyrannical rant about fucking Winterfell over completely. And then she talked sense into him. So, I mean, overall, she had a very wholesome motherly conversation with Joffrey. Joffrey's just a douchebag, like always. And then we also get a scene with Robert Baratheon having conversations with Ser Barristan Selmy, who's one of the greatest knights to ever live. He's also in the Kingsguard. And they're talking about their first the first men that they've ever slain and Robert actually prompts Jamie Lannister to get into it and Jamie of course being charismatic and and the asshole that he is he just says don't remember and then he gets into this whole rant about the the mad king heiress and he also had this rant about the mad king heiress with Ned earlier like at the very beginning of the episode and even though Jamie is made out to be a bad guy, I've always loved him. He's a great character. I love his wayness. I love his one-liners. I love the banter that he can have with everybody. Even when they're not jesting along, he still has the quirkiest banter with everybody. So, yeah, I mean, episode three, Lord Snow, it was, I'd say it was 50-50 main book story and then 50-50 show filler scenes and I loved it. I, I don't think it's as pitch perfect as the first episode but I will say that I do believe that this episode was a lot better than the second episode and the second episode itself was really strong but overall for me episode three Lord Snow still gonna give it a nine out of ten. Thank you.